how can I split the preamp signal in two? Okay, that's a good question. And it comes from Harold in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Really? <laughs> oh, I was thinking it must be like Detroit sort of stuff that where you have a lot of mechanics. I wonder how that place got its name. Well, maybe someone will let us know. Uh, how can I split the preamp signal in two? I'm using an ADCOM two-channel preamp with an ADCOM five-channel amp. And um, I want to split the two preamp channels to supply four amp channels. Aha! Uh, I want to uh, run two identical speakers into the next room, but I don't want to use a speaker selector box because I feel it'll take away from my main listening area sound. Right? Oh. Uh, as you know, I my mind runs at a hundred miles an hour and in different directions sometimes and we have to catch it. So I want to tell you just a quick story about ADCOM. ADCOM is a, a great story and, and I don't know how many of you know what the word, the name ADCOM stands for, but it, it, it stands for additional compensation. And ADCOM was started by an old dear friend of mine, he's, he's since departed, uh, and I think his son uh, Alex, uh, uh, Newt Channon was, was the, the fellow's name, and I think his son Alex Channon took over the company, I, I think it's gone now. But years ago, Morris Kessler, who is still around, Morris is a great guy, he owns, now he owns SAE and he owns, uh, gosh, um, ATI, uh, Theta, uh, Morris is, is, has a, a manufacturing plant in Los Angeles, he's, a, he's an engineer, he buys up companies and he, he turns them around and he, he's a good guy. Anyway, Morris had developed during, during the SAE days, uh, he had developed a amplifier that wasn't selling very well and his rep at the time, Newt Channon, uh, they got talking somehow and, and uh, Morris said, I've got this pile of amps, a warehouse full of amps that I can't sell, and uh, I'm going to give up the line, whatever, I think they were SAEs. Um, and are you interested? Could you help me move these things? And Newt looked at him and said, yeah, but I'd have to change the name. He goes, I don't care. Change the name. So they did. And he looked at it and said, well, what am I going to change it to? And he said, well, it's going to give me additional compensation. So he changed it to ADCOM, and later on, it did so well that he started having Morris build him the 555, and, and, uh, and there were a lot of great products from ADCOM. But that's the story of how, how uh, uh, Newt Shannon came up with the name ADCOM, additional compensation. Okay, so this is kind of a simple one. Um, we, we want to take the, the back of a preamplifier. Here's our, our, our stellar gain cell DAC preamp. And on the back you can see that there's two outputs. They're RCA and they're XLR. And not all products have two. But let's just imagine for a moment that it just had a pair of RCA outputs. Well, what you can do is simply use a splitter. Now in this case, we, we could feed one amplifier with the XLR connector, the balanced output, and the other one with the RCA. Now that's commonly done in an amplifier like this, you know, sort of a higher end amplifier that has both XLR and RCA outs. But in the case of the ADCOM, which I don't believe, I don't think they back then uh, paid much attention to balanced outputs, which I believe are very, very important. Something you should definitely pay attention to and work with. But in any case, um, whatever you have. You can buy a simple Y connector which will split this output, send it off to your two amplifiers because they're high impedance. So amplifiers typically have an input impedance of around 30,000 ohms and these outputs are probably around 100 ohms. I know ours are, but yours on the ADCOM are probably 100 ohms too. So 100 ohms can drive multiple 30k loads. For every 30k load you're going to uh, drop it down so in half. So if you have two 30k loads, that becomes a 15k load. But you're still uh, miles away from the golden rule, which is a minimum of 10 to 20 times higher impedance than the low impedance that you're feeding it. So we would say that you'd have to have at least a thousand ohms and probably better at 2k at a minimum and higher is always better. So low driving high is always good 
and that would be no problem at all. Just buy yourself, just go on Amazon and buy a simple splitter. They have high-end high ones too if you're concerned about it, but I, I wouldn't be. All right, thank you for the question. I'll talk to you tomorrow.